right. Hi, everybody. How are you? Let's see. I can make myself big. Ash, can you make me big? <laughs> I see everybody. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, make sure you're in speaker view. I should have you pinned there. So, okay. Let's see. How do I, this is so weird because I've never had it like that before. And now we're seeing the back camera. Too weird. Turn on center stage. Nope, I still see you. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Okay, let's see. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Not that I don't want to see your smiling faces, but it makes my screen really small. So it's really hard for me to see what's going on. So thank you for your patience. I appreciate it. Hi, everybody. Let's try that again. Good afternoon to you guys. Happy Saturday. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your Saturday. I appreciate it very much. Got a really fun project for you guys today. I, um, I hope to inspire you. Uh, if you are looking to maybe working on gift giving, for the upcoming holidays, or if you're just looking to make something for yourself, or if you are a fan of fabric designs for jewelry, this is going to be the class for you. Um, I'm going to show you how to use something that we normally use um, with beads uh, and turn it into something a little bit softer. So we're going to be using the jewel loom for today's class. I've shown you guys how to use this in some of my previous classes, but we've used this in the traditional sense where we have used beads to create bracelets and rings very similar to what I have on. You can use large beads, you can use uh, seed beads for that. But I'm going to show you how to use fabrics. Um, you can use yarns, you can use embroidery floss, which is what we're going to be using for our project today. Um, but I'm hoping to kind of expand your, um, your repertoire if you, uh, if you <laughs> would like to kind of look at the loom in a different way where you can really use literally any kind of, of uh, string material. You can use ribbons, you can use literally anything. So I'm hoping to inspire you. So Let's get down to business because we are only using a small amount of materials, but the setup takes a minute. So let me get you guys turned around and we will get started with that. All right, so for those of you who maybe have never used the jewel loom before, it is a flexible loom that is designed to fit in your hand. So it's very small, it's lightweight. When you get it in the package, of course, it is nice and flat. So it, it's not much of a loom until we have put in the rod to create the shape that we need to create our pieces. Now this is these steps are going to be the same whether you are using materials and fabrics or if you are using beads and beading thread. Okay. So the loom itself is flexible. It's not bendable. Okay. It will break if you try to bend it, but it is flexible in the sense that it is going to give a little bit so that we can insert the rod into the loom. On either side, there is a little hole on the top and the bottom, okay? And you want to insert the rod into one of those holes. Then you want to very slightly flex the loom and place the other, or other end of the rod. Now you can see how we have this flex in here. That is going to allow us the space that we need between the ridges to work on our work, but we can also get our hands underneath our work as well. Okay. So that's the simple setup for the tool itself. On the back, you're going to see there are two buttons. They're not really, they're not pushable buttons, but it's a little, a little button on each side. And that's where you're going to secure your thread to make your warps. And we're going to go ahead and get started with that. So if you are new to looming, warping is the threads that run up and down, right? And the weft are the threads that go back and forth. So traditionally with a, let's see here, I'll take my bracelet off so you can see it. Traditionally, when you use beads, your warps, of course, running this direction, but your wefts running this direction will contain beads. So you're using your beading thread to add beads to your design. We're not doing that today. We're not going to be using any beads, though you can incorporate beads 
we are just going to be using embroidery thread to go back and forth. And that tabby weave that I'm going to show you is going to create these color blocks. Are blocks the only kind of thing that you can do with this? Absolutely not. You can do all kinds of patterns and really cool things, but we're going to keep it simple so that you can, as a beginner, get started and then be inspired to try new uh, designs with your embroidery floss or whatever it is that you're using. Okay. All right. So we're going to create the warps. And what we're going to do for that is we're just going to pick one of our embroidery threads for that. I have chosen white. I'm using um, this little package that I got from Michael's that has a really cool color palette in it. This is a very different color palette from something that I am normally used to using. Um, so I wanted to keep with what is in uh, the packaging and I'm just going to keep it in that order. So we're going to use the white for our warps. And then I'm going to use the teal, the gray, and the blue, and this kind of coral color. And then I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's this maroon that's in there as well. So kind of an interesting color palette, but I really like it. I feel like it's very, very different, but you can use any colors that you want to. You're going to need about five different colors. Um, that does not include the one that you were going to use for your warping. All right. So to get started, you're going to find the end of your thread. Now don't cut a length, just use it directly from the skein here. And you're going to come to the back and we want to tie on our thread. So what we want is we just want to tie a knot around our button. So I'm just going to loop around. And pull that down. And I want this to be nice and secure. So I'm going to do double knots. Okay. And then I may even wrap around the button a few more times. I just want to make sure that this is nice and secure and that it's not going to come undone because we do need to keep some tension on this as we are going back and forth to create our warp threads. And when we do that, we don't want to accidentally pull our button out, right? Or the knot from around our button because that would cause us to have to start completely over again. So just a couple of really good knots and you're good to go. Okay. All right, so now we are ready. We're ready to warp our loom. So for those of you who have done looming classes before, it's no different. Um, we're going to just bring our, our thread up and we're going to place it into one of the grooves. Okay. And then we're going to turn over. So now that we are looking at the front, you can see it's coming over from the back, from the back to the front between two of the little grooves here and we're going to pull it all the way down here to the other end and we're just going to pick a, a groove that's pretty close to straight across. It doesn't have to be exact. If you want to count the little ridges and make it exact, you can. Uh, more than anything, you just want it to be pretty close. You definitely don't want it to be like at an angle or anything like that. You just want to try to get it as straight across as you possibly can. Okay, now we're going to go to the back. Whoops, we're going to go to the back. And we're going to take our thread and we're going to wrap around the button on the back and then come back up to the front by placing it into one of the grooves on the front. Okay. And I, let's see, let's skip one. Let's make, so let me, let me show you what I mean. So let's, let's skip a groove and then place our thread. Instead of putting it directly next to that one, let's skip one. It's just gonna give it a little extra room in between there. It might make your bracelet or your bookmark if that's what you're gonna make a little bit wider. Okay, so skip a groove, go into one, turn your loom back over. Now, the important thing here is that you wanna be keeping even tension on all of this. So you need to be pulling tight as you are warping back and forth. Okay, skip a groove up here. Come to the back, again, wrap around your button. Make sure you don't accidentally wrap around your metal uh, rod, okay? Come back up here to the front, skip a groove, okay? All the way down to the bottom and do the same thing. So what we have now is we have three warps. We need to have six, so we're just gonna keep going, right? we come around to the back. Now we are going to place it into 
the groove that we need and then come back around here to the front. So we're just going back and forth. Each time we go back and forth, we're making sure that we go around the button on the back, bring the cord back up to the front, place it in the correct groove, which is every other groove. Okay, bring it all the way back down here to the other end. Again, skip a groove, go around that button on the back. Okay, and then back up again. Okay, now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six warp threads. That's exactly what we need. So now we're ready to tie off. So we're going to come back here to the back. I've made a huge mess out of my embroidery thread here, but we're going to come to the back with our working end. Okay. And we are going to wrap around that button a couple of times just so that we don't lose that tension. Hold it down with your thumb and then you want to use your scissors to trim off. Okay. Now with the tail that you have, we want to tie this off. I like to take mine and I will go, I'll take the tail and I'll go underneath all of these warp threads on the back. And then I kind of loop around those kind of just lassoing them right and take my thread back through my loop you don't have to do it this way feel free to just tie around your button like you did to get started i just like for this part to be extra secure because i don't want to lose any of that tension see how i pulled that down nice and tight i'm gonna wrap around the button again I'm gonna go behind my warps one more time and make another little loop and a knot. So it's kind of like a, like a half hitch knot, right? See how I just looped around? Pull my end through and then just pull down nice and tight, okay? If you need to trim any of that off because it's too long, you can do that. Just don't want that to get in the way of your work. So trim that off. Okay, now we're ready to work on the front of the loom. But the first thing we have to do is we have to take this rod out. Now, why are we doing that? Because now we are going to be relying on the threads, the warps and the tension of the warps to hold this bowed shape, right, of our loom. And that's going to pull extra tight on our threads and it's going to expand the loom just a little bit more and, and give even more tension here. So the same thing, you just want to barely flex. I like to hold my finger over the top of my warps at the top just so that they don't try to hop out of the groove and you're going to just flex the loom just slightly to pull out one end of your rod and then you can easily take out the other end. So now you can see we have nice tension on our warps and we are ready to get started with our work. Now, if this is the first time you've ever used the loom before, I will tell you this part that I just did and that's the warping process, it does take practice, okay? Do not get frustrated with this. It's not as easy as I make it seem, but it is easy once you've practiced it a few times. The biggest part of this is keeping the tension, right? You've got to keep the correct amount of tension on these cords. So you wanna be pulling them tight as you're going back and forth. It may take you a couple of tries, that's okay, right? That's okay. Just be patient with yourself and practice it a couple of times, okay? All right, now we're ready to do what is called a tabby weave. And that's basically what this entire bracelet or bookmark, if that's what you choose to make, is gonna be made out of. So what we're gonna do is we are going to use, I like to use these tapestry needles because they're kind of thick and chunky and they have a nice eye on them. You can use whatever you want to, but I do, I do recommend something with a nice large eye because the embroidery floss is not super thin, right? So I've laid out my color pattern here, just as it was in the packaging. So the teal, the gray, the sky blue, this coral color, and this maroon, I think is going to make an interesting looking um, project. Okay, so what you want is you want to cut about 30 inches of the first color. I've cut three strands of each because I know we're going to use a color more than once, but I'm going to take just one of those strands of the first color, and I'm going to thread my needle 
with my embroidery thread and just leave yourself a little bit of a tail, right? Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do what is called a tabby weave. And this weave um, is going to be the exact same through the entire project. I'm going to lower you down just a little. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take our needle. Now, first of all, you want to be working, assuming that your bracelet's going to be about six, six and a half inches long. You want to be working towards the center of your loom. Don't start your work right up here at the top because we need all of these extra threads to tie off, whether you're going to create a braid with them or you're going to do some loops or you're going to add a button or beads or whatever. You need to be sure that you start your work a few inches down and try to focus on everything being in the center. So I'm gonna come down about two, maybe three inches. I'm gonna take my needle with my thread. I'm working left to right. I'm gonna take that needle. I'm going underneath the first warp, over the second, under the third, over the fourth, under the fifth, and over the sixth. So you can see I've just over, under, or I'm sorry, under, over, under, over, under, over, okay, with my needle. Now, when I pull, it's gonna do the same thing. My thread is just gonna replace my needle in this. And I'm gonna pull, and I'm gonna leave myself about three inches of a tail on one side, okay? And that's on the left side. Now, I'm gonna go back the other direction with my needle and thread in the opposite direction in the opposite pattern. So I'm gonna take my needle and this time I'm going under that outer, over, under, over, under, over, right? So it's gonna make, make my threads go opposite what they were in the first pass. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull that up and you do have to use your fingers a little bit here to push everything together, but that is your basic tabby weave. Okay, so you're, you're going over, under, over, under, and then you're looping this outer warp. And you're gonna loop that warp on both outer edges. So one pass will loop on this side, the other pass will loop on the other side. Okay, so what we want though, is we don't want this extra tail hanging out because we wanna be able to switch colors several times. And um, you know we don't want all these extra threads. Now, if you do want extra threads and you wanna leave your tails every time you switch colors, you can, and then you can tie them together on the edges like this and add beads if you want to. It makes a really fun little extra dangle to your bracelet, but we want ours to be nice and clean. So you can see, where did the sample go? So with the sample, we don't have those transitions hanging, right? They're all woven in. The way to do that is really, really easy. So what we're gonna do is, now we're over here on the left-handed side, we have our tail where we very first started. What we wanna do is we wanna take that tail and we just kinda of want to smooth it up against this outer warp, right? And just kinda of hold that there with your fingers. I'm holding down here away from the work, okay? My needle and thread are here. I'm just gonna catch that in my weaving. So I'm gonna take my needle and thread and I'm just going to treat it the same as I would if it were a single. So under, over, under, over, under, over, okay? And pull. Now what's gonna happen is you're gonna loop around that outer warp, but you're also looping around your tail. So we're gonna just cover that tail up with our work. Okay, so just keep smoothing it down over that first warp and you just wanna keep going. Now you wanna keep even tension. I'm not pulling super tight on these passes. I'm not adding beads or anything, um, but I want to keep the same width all the way around. So if you pull too tight when you're going back and forth, you're gonna kind of distort and make your, your bracelet skinnier in some places. So you want to keep it even. Okay. So now I'm going to, I'm over here on the right. I'm going to go back the other direction. So my needle goes under, over, under, over, under, over. And I'm going over that tail that we had as well. And I'm going to pull. Right. And kind of use your fingers to bring everything together. 
right? Keeping that tail running right along the edge. Okay, tighten everything up. Don't get crazy pulling too tight though. Okay, now I'm gonna do, I've done three passes, but it's actually, it's, it's only two loops on this outer edge, right? Even though we've gone back and forth three times. What I want is I want 10 loops on this side. So that'll actually end up being like 20 passes. And then we're gonna change colors, okay? But in the meantime, we're just gonna keep going back and forth. So under, over, under, whoops, over, under, okay? And again, smoothing that tail down, it will get caught in our thread, okay? And a pinching everything together. Okay, and then we're gonna go back the other direction. Under, over, under, over just like so, okay? And that's it, that's all there is to this. Now I will show you when we change colors, um, how to trim off the tail and how to tuck in your next tail, but basically that's all this is gonna be, right? We're just going back and forth, weaving our needle over and under, making our passes back and forth. And we're gonna work up a little color block that's gonna be about almost an inch, not quite, wide of this color and then we'll change colors okay okay back the other way Okay, now we can count our loops. We've got one, two, three, four, five. We need five more loops on that right-hand side. So a few more passes and then we'll change to a different color. I'm always kind of making sure that everything is lined up, kind of, you know, coaxing everything into the right shape with my fingers uh, because it does want to travel, right? I mean, there's a lot of room here on the loom and those, those passes back and forth, they want to separate out. And I don't really want to see those warp threads though. I want to be sure that those warp threads are covered up. And the only way to do that is to make sure that everything kind of lines up the way you want it to and is nice and snug right up against each other. Okay, back the other direction. Okay, and then going back the other way. Okay. So you can actually use like um, a comb instead of your fingers if you want to. You can use your nylon gel pliers if you want to kind of come in here. Just be careful. Don't squeeze or move things around too much. You want to make really small little movements. Um, but yeah, you can use other things. You can use a comb, uh, just like a regular plastic comb for your hair. You can use um, like a pick. Um, same thing to kind of coax all of those together instead of your fingers. All right, let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Almost done with this color. And then we're going to switch. You absolutely, absolutely can add beads to this if you want to. You can add some. Um, some large hole beads that are going to accommodate your embroidery thread and whatever size needle you're using, of course. Um, but you can add other things to this. You don't have to just stick with the embroidery thread. But if you're going to use this as a bookmark, definitely might 
want to leave the beads out so that it'll fit in between your pages, right? Okay, so now we're ready to switch to a new uh, color, but there's something that I want to do. I need to, I want to finish, because see, we've got this tail that's going on here on the left-handed side. I want to finish on the right-handed side, so I'm going to make one more pass so that my needle and my thread are over here on the right. That's going to put a tail on both sides, okay? So what that means is I'm going to, I'm going to, tuck this one in actually what you want to do is just you can take your needle and thread go underneath see how my thread is coming over this outer warp go underneath it pull it back out we're really just going to lasso that outer warp okay that's just going to make it look a little bit more seamless when we bring that other color in um <clears throat> so leave your needle and thread over here on this side okay when we go to add a new color, the new color tail is gonna take over where this tail is. That's why I want, to, I want to finish on this side because we're also going to have a tail here. Does that make sense? So I don't wanna bulk this up with having two tails here and only one over here. It just, it just doesn't even out very well. This tail that we started with is nice and secure because it's covered in 10 of our passes. So I'm gonna come in with my scissors and just trim that off. I know it's secure because it's tucked in all of those. It's not gonna come out. Over here on the other one, I wanna trim it and I wanna trim it up to about two, three inches, right? Trim your needle off of there. You can take your scrap piece and put it elsewhere. Now we're gonna treat this tail the same way, right? We're gonna lay it up against this outer warp and our new tail with our new color is gonna be the same way. So take your needle, pick up your next color that you're going to use. I'm going to use a gray. So let me pull one of my gray pieces. Okay. I'm going to thread my needle really quick with my new color. Okay. And now we're going to start again on the left, always going left to right. Okay. I'm just kind of hold that tail out of the way for now. Take your needle under, over, under, over, under, over, right? Cool. And again, leave yourself about a three inch tail of your new color. Okay. Now treat this color that you finished with the same way. Smooth it up against your outer warp. Okay. Take your needle and thread under, over, under, over, under, over, right? And we're just capturing that tail on that side. Oops. Okay. And now when we go back the other direction, we want to cap capture this tail as well. So just hold it down right up against the work. Under, over, under, over, under, over. And when you pull, you've captured both tails and those tails will be hidden in your work the further you go, okay? So we're gonna go back and forth, just same things, right? All those tails will get hidden you'll never even see them. And all you'll see is just the color transition. You can do this with any, um, any stringing material that you want to. B-lon, S-lon, nylon cord, cotton cord. You don't have to just stick to embroidery thread for this. I just chose the embroidery thread because it's easy to use. Um, and it comes in such a wide variety of colors, but you can literally do this. And the technique is exactly the same with any kind of material. So if you wanted to do this with ribbon, if you wanted to do this with hemp, 
you can, you can do it exactly the same way. You can change colors. You can hide your tails, this exact same process. Um, it just might be a little bulkier, right? Depending on what, what the thickness is of the material that you're using. But overall, the technique is exactly the same. Now it is a project that takes a little bit of time. I realize that uh, we're going to be here for a little bit. In fact, we may we may not do an entire length of bracelet um, just because of the time. But I will show you and talk about the different ways that you can finish this off because I don't want to leave you without the uh, knowledge of how to finish this off. So we may only do like maybe five colors. And though that might not be enough for a bracelet, it would definitely work for a bookmark. Okay. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight loops. Okay, back the other way. And then we'll go back over to the left, or I'm sorry, back over to the right to finish. Okay, so we wanna finish off over here and we're ready to trim off these tails so that we have new ones, right? So again, take your needle under that last warp and just loop around if you want to. You don't necessarily have to do that part. I just feel like it just, it kind of completes that pass instead of actually ending on this second to last warp. Okay, so the things are, the steps are the same, except this time we have two tails instead of one. So I'm gonna come in with my scissors, I'm gonna cut close, trim off that tail because it's tucked in all of this work. And then the same thing over here, I'm gonna trim off the other tail because it's tucked into all of the work on the right side. Just be careful, don't trim your other threads, right? Okay, now we wanna trim this off, leave ourselves two, three inches of tail here, just like that. Take our needle off and we want to start a new color. So I'm going to grab the light blue. It's like a sky blue color. Whoops, sorry you guys. Okay, I'm going to thread my needle. Okay, and we're just going to start fresh over here on the left, under, over, under, over, under, over, and pull. Leave yourself, these colors are very, very similar, but I think once you work up a little bit more of it, you'll see that this is blue and not gray. Um, leave yourself a little bit of a tail, right? And then over here, we wanna capture the tail that we just ended with, with our gray. So under, over, under, over, under, making sure we're smoothing that one down. We'll capture it with our pass. Oh, that's good enough. <laughs> Actually, I accidentally captured it on the underneath, but here in just a second, it'll tuck and you won't see it. Okay. So now same thing. We want to smooth our original tail down, right? Lots of smoothing, but once you get it hooked, like one or two passes, it's, you, you don't have to worry about it nearly as much anymore. Okay. So we're over here on the right. We're going, or on the left, we're going to the right. Same thing with our tabby weave, okay? 
back through. Oh no, I picked up some scrap pieces with my thread. Okay, now again, going back the other direction. How, oh, that's my, <laughs> oh my goodness, you guys. No, no, no. I need to trim off. What have I done here? I feel like I messed up what we were doing. So I, I need to trim off this gray one. I don't know why. Oh, it was just a scrap. I'm like, how did that end up? <laughs> okay. I, my needle was going back and forth and I was like picking up hitchhiker pieces of <laughs> scraps and they were working their way into the work. That's so funny. Okay. So <laughs> proceed as normal. Just ignore my little faux pas. I was, like, I was very confused as to what was happening here. So again, threading or um, smoothing down your tails on both sides. Make sure your scraps are well away from your work. Okay. Under, over, under, over. That's too funny. And working our way back across. Okay. And then just kind of cinching everything up. And you can see that that color transition will be nice and smooth. Your tails are hidden. And we're just gonna keep going back and forth. Okay, back the other direction. Something to mention, and I don't know if you've noticed or not, I didn't, I didn't necessarily call it out, um, but I'm always keeping a hand, my, my hand that doesn't have my needle, so my right hand, I'm always kind of just holding on to all of the warps away from the work, down a few inches, right, and I'm, I'm keeping those tails nice and smoothed down, um, and since I'm only working with the one hand with the needle, I can do that, right? And I'll let go, pull my needle, but I'm still holding the tails all down. It just keeps it from kind of making it chunky and trying to sneak up into your work and make extra, you know, extra bumps and lumps. So just kind of holding it all down and switching hands as you're switching sides makes a big difference. So if you find that those tails are trying to sneak up into your tabby weave and are, are getting out of control, try smoothing them down. You can even, if you want to, you can take painter's tape, um, you can take a clip of some kind and clip it to your work to hold them all down. Then you have both hands free, um, but I find that it's not necessary because I only need the one hand to go back and forth with the needle. So that other hand can hold everything secure. Okay, so just back and forth, really just repetition, but that's part of what I love personally, just in my opinion, that's part of what I love about looming is that, and even if you're doing it with beads, it's just this repetition of movement, uh, just a, that simple back and forth. It's kind of calming, you know, it's, it's not a crazy technical you don't have to think too much about it. You get in the groove and then you just start working. And as you're working, the work builds up. You get to see these beautiful color transitions. You get to see the results of your work. And you're not really, you know, you're not using tons of brain power. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but, um, you know, it becomes just a rhythm and it's a nice a nice change to some of the other very technical things that I do in my jewelry making. So if you're looking for something that's kind of calming, this is definitely that. Okay, let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This will be eight. So we're pretty close to changing colors again. We'll do two more colors and then we'll finish this off and talk about all of the different things that you can do 
with the ends. Okay, I want to finish over here on the right. Okay, so finished on the right, drop your needle down, and now we're going to take care of these tails. Okay, so I'm going to come in with my scissors, I'm going to trim off the one on the on the left, and then I'm going to trim off the one on the right. Okay, now Again, I'm gonna just kind of lasso around this outer warp and trim that off. Okay, and I'm gonna switch to a new color. I'm going to use the coral and then we'll finish with the burgundy, the maroon color. Okay, so I'll thread the new color. Taking my needle and thread on the left to the right, under, over, under, over, under, over. Pull. Leave yourself a little bit of a tail, okay? And then going back the other direction, catching that tail from the color that we just ended, going back the other way. Okay, so got that one captured. We're gonna smooth it down. And then we need to do the same thing with this one. So we're gonna take it and smooth it down and hold on to it, okay. And then going back, oops, the other direction. We'll have both tails caught and secure. So now, just gonna start building up the rows of this color. Okay, other direction. So we're just doing just the color blocks, about 10 uh, passes of a color, if you wanted to create different shapes within your work, you absolutely can do that. Um, it's instead of going all the way across with one color, you could do, you know, three warps and turn around and then three warps and turn around and you can create these really cool patterns and shapes within your work. Um, but that's definitely what I would consider, um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily um, an advanced technique, uh, but it, it can be a little bit more challenging um, and does take a little bit more time, but it just goes to show you what kind of possibilities there are with your work. Um, you, can, you can essentially use your threads to create a scene or a pattern. Um, geometric shapes within all of these passes, which is really cool. I'm a huge fan of fiber jewelry just because it is so different. It's also very lightweight. Um, and even though it's lightweight, I feel like it does kind of have that wintertime vibe to it because it's fabric, right? So you make yourself a nice wide fiber piece bracelet or whatever. Um, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's like wrist warmers, right? That's kind of where I was going with that. <laughs> like your wrist warmer. But truthfully, you can do this large scale and actually make scarves if you wanted to. And the technique is the same.
couple more passes of this coral color and we will switch to the maroon and then we will call it done. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, one back across and then come back over here to the other side. We'll switch colors. Okay, so one back over here to the right to finish with this. Okay, drop all that, come in with your scissors, and trim off both tails. Lasso around that outer warp. And then trim off. Okay, and we're gonna pick up our last color at least for our project. This is kind of the abbreviated version, right? Because you can see how it would take a would take another 30 minutes or so to work up the amount that we needed for a full bracelet. But I'll show you the finishing technique, which is gonna be the same, so. All right, so we're, we're over here. We've got our new color under, whoops, under, over, under, over, same steps. Leave ourselves a little bit of a tail. I want to capture the coral tail. We go back the other direction. Okay. Cool. Okay. And then we want the new tail. We want to capture it as well. definitely an interesting color palette. I like it. It's different from anything I would, I would pick out. So this was out of my, out of my comfort zone as far as colors are concerned, but I really like them. I think it's very interesting mix, but their embroidery thread comes in so many different colors. The sky is the limit, right? You could pick any colors that you wanted. We're very close to being done. Just a few more passes and I'll show you how to finish this off. Hey, Sarah, we have a question. Um, how would you weave for a slant with each new color or a diagonal probably? Right, so when you would do that, um, I'll actually show you cause I can take it out. It's a little bit more tricky. That's why I say it's, it's not quite um, an advanced technique, but it is a little bit trickier, but I can definitely show that to you guys. So you can see, there are actually a couple of different methods to doing that. Um, let me make a few more passes of this and then we will we'll talk about how to do that. All right, I'll make a couple more passes of this and then I'll show you. So it's pretty much the same, but you don't go all the way across with your work. So um, you wanna decide how, how far 
um, and I'm not, I'm not super proficient at this, but I'm, gonna sh I'm just gonna show you one of several ways that you can do this, okay? So what you would do is you're gonna be starting over here on your left, just like normal, okay? And let's say we only wanna do maybe, we'll go all the, we'll go up to the second to last warp, okay? So our needle is actually exiting between the last two warps and not underneath this last warp, okay? So now we would go back the other direction, right here where we are. Okay, so just kind of shortening the path basically is what we're doing. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna stagger our color. Okay, so you can see it's, it's shorter. Then we're gonna go back and we'll stop one short on this one. This one is actually gonna end with our needle underneath. So we're gonna turn back around um, and again, there are tons of different techniques for this, but this is the, this is probably the easiest and one of the very first ways you learn how to do this. So just go a little shorter. Whoops, I went too far. Each time. You can see how we're building kind of like a little stair step. It might be kind of hard to see with this color, but that's basically what we're doing. We're just kind of stair stepping our color, right? Then if you want to fill that in, obviously you're probably gonna to wanna to fill that in. You can start on the other side and to start on the other side, basically the easiest way to do this is to let's lasso around our tail here, okay? Trim off our working cord. We're gonna trim off the tail that exists. We're gonna trim off this tail that exists. I'm actually gonna turn my whole loom around, okay? And then we're gonna fill in those spaces. We're gonna start here and work our way across filling in. So let's just pick up another color and do that real quick. So, um let's pick a color any color so i just picked up this teal that we started with right and we're going to do the same thing but we're going to go short right um so we're going to go we're going to lasso around it's a little a little bit more difficult to explain this way, but that's why I say this is a little bit more complicated than our beginner project, but we can do it. I'll show you a quick example, um, but you definitely can find all kinds of examples of this. So I basically just go around that once, right? And then the next one, I'm gonna go up to, You see what I mean? So we're going to be building that space. But as we're building and filling in that space, we also need to be holding our, our tails in. Now, this tail up here doesn't quite matter at the moment, um, but this bottom tail does. So we're working our way upwards. So I want to capture. Goodness, I've made a mess here with my thread. Hold on. Okay, so over, under, over. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Cool. Okay. And then, and you can see, I'm, I'm only working up to the color that is, is there. So instead of going all the way across, I'm just going up until I meet with that other color, right? And this technique works for any shapes that you want to make. It's gonna be the same 
um, you're just going to kind of have to predetermine what those shapes, what you want those shapes to be. So you can actually maybe draw it out on paper and then um, lay it underneath your work so that you can kind of follow along with it. You can do this on grid squares if you want to. Um, oops, <laughs> get needle underneath there. I like to use grid paper for mine. I just find that it's, it's a little bit easier to keep up with. See, so we're just building the, this teal up against that maroon until we meet up with the maroon, the end. Just keeping your tails tucked same way. Oh, I didn't get it all the way through that time. Go all the way up and catch the end. So now I'm going all the way across, okay? Then once you fill in the space and you're actually making your passes, uh, full passes again, you can turn your, your work back over the other direction. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier to go back to looking at it in the traditional sense. But you can see how um, you, can, you can create triangles, you can create squares, you can, uh, you can even do circles, though keep in mind the circles are gonna be more like a pixelated circle because obviously we're working in a, in a square area. Um, but you get the idea. So you just build up and then fill in the spaces. I like to turn the loom upside down to do that just because it's a little bit easier for me to do it instead of trying to think backwards um, and to do my work backwards. But I think some people find that it is easier just to leave their loom facing in the original direction for the whole thing. Uh, it's really just kind of whatever works for you make a couple more passes of this just to cover up our tails so that I know that they're nice and secure before we finish. I hope that I explained that okay. I know it's a little tricky, but, um, I, and I could do an entire class just about that. Um, but I, I wanted to give you at least the abbreviated version. So that if you wanted to um, experiment, you definitely have some direction now. All right, so I've made plenty of passes here. I feel like our tails for both of those colors are nice and secure. So now what I want to do is I want to finish this off, okay? And the first thing I wanna do is I wanna, instead of just lassoing this outer uh, warp, I'm gonna actually tie a half hitch knot instead of just doing a regular lasso. So I'm gonna take my needle underneath the outer warp here where I'm, I'm, my thread is currently finishing off. I'm gonna bring my needle up, right? I've got myself a little loop. So instead of just leaving it as a little lasso, I'm actually gonna take my needle back through that. That's gonna tie a half hitch knot and that's gonna actually secure that end, okay? So now it's tied. I know that it's not gonna come undone. It's not, that, that last pass won't come undone. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna cut off our tails from our colors, okay? And we're gonna leave this one on here for now, okay? I am gonna trim it a little bit shorter to get my needle off. Okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna take this off. Now, obviously we don't have enough here to make an entire bracelet, um, but we're gonna pretend like we do, um, or we're gonna treat this like a, as if it were a bookmark. I want to cut this off of the loom and I want to do it back here at the button so that I have all of this extra warp thread to work with. Okay, so I'm going to come up next to the button and trim. And then it just kind of slips off the button on the other side. Okay, so now what we've got is we have all of these ends to work with and we really just kind of have uh, a, a ton of 
things that we can do at this point, depending on how you want to use your piece. So let me show you from the sample. I made the sample into a bracelet. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to tie all of your warps together. We can do that right now with what we've got. Okay, so I'm going to take my warps since they're an even number of warps. I'm going to take one and two. Okay, and I'm going to tie just an overhanded knot with the two cords running in the same direction. Okay, and I want to bring that knot down to the work as close as I can get it. Just tied that into a knot. I'm going to take the third and fourth. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just kind of tie them around my finger here, both cords running in the same direction to do an overhanded knot. So before you do anything else, this is what you want to do. Now, why are we doing this? We're doing this because remember our, our warp threads those are not secured to anything anymore. They're not attached to the loom. So our work can slide back and forth, right? Or you could accidentally pull your warp threads completely out. So we want to secure them with knots to make sure that it's not gonna go anywhere as we are doing other things to our warps. All right, so now what I've done is tied those all off, right? And now I have three strands instead of six. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on this side. And with your, with your color piece, you end up with extra, right? You have, we have one extra cord because you've got your color. Now, if, if it bothers you to have this random color in with your work, um, you can finish off your work in the same color as your warp threads. So for instance, if, if we had finished off with white instead of this teal color, it would have it would have just gone into our warp threads and not been very noticeable. But because we have this teal, uh, obviously it's gonna be noticeable. You can put some glue, you can put some hypo cement or some sort of fabric glue if you wanted to on that knot and trim this color off completely if you want to. I don't trust it. So I usually just leave it in with the rest of the work. I find that it just kind of adds interest. So I'm gonna treat those two strands as one, right? I'm gonna take the first and second, including my color, tie those off. Now at this point, if you, want to, if you want to cut that color off, you can. I feel like it's a little bit more secure after we've knotted, we did our half hitch knot, now we've done our overhanded knot. So if you want to take it now and cut it off, you can, or you can just leave it. We're going to cut ours off. Okay. I'm going to take two and, or I'm sorry, three and four those. Bring that knot down close to your work. Okay. And then five and six, tie those two together. All right. So now your, your options are really large <laughs> and it really just kind of depends on what you're going for. So if you want to turn this into a bookmark, you can simply just leave it like it is and trim your cords. You can thread beads onto them, right? And tie knots. And then as you put it into your book, you can have your, your beads hanging off, right? And those are all secured with the knots, of course. Um, and that just adds something a little extra to it if, you, if that's what you're going for, if you want a bookmark. If you don't want a bookmark and you want a bracelet, a couple of different options. So. You can finish it off in the traditional friendship style, which I think kind of stumps a lot of people. If you haven't worn a friendship bracelet that's finished off this way in a long time, it's kind of confusing as to how you are supposed to <laughs> wear this. Um, I took the three, right? I tied an overhanded knot to tie them all together and then I braided them nice and long and tied them off, right? So this is one end. You can do the same thing on the other end and then just tie them together, 
right? Just tie it onto your wrist. That's one of the ways we used to do it when we wore friendship bracelets when we were a kid. The other option is to do what I did on the other end. And that's, I tied my bundles together. Okay. And then I tied them together again, a little bit further down so that I can separate them out into a loop like so. Okay. And then you would take your braid and you really just wrap your braid through that a few times. And that's how you wore it, right? Just like that with your dangles. A lot of people don't like that. That's the way we wore them. When I was a teenager, that's how we wore our friendship bracelets. If we didn't just tie the ends together and then you just wore it until you had to cut it off, right? Uh, I, I'm not a huge, huge fan of that, but if you wanna keep it, you know, to the tradition of friendship bracelets, those are your two options. Your other option is to make a loop just like, <laughs> just like this one, okay? We'll do that. And this is not in the instructions, so, um, but I feel like this is pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna take all those bundles, tie them all together, all right? just like that. Okay. Come down a little bit further and tie again. So we do have this kind of loop situation, if you will. Okay. What we want is a space big enough to accommodate a button. I love buttons in jewelry. That's one of my favorite ways to finish things off. So I'm going to trim this off nice and short. Okay, now over here on the other end, I'm gonna add a shank style button to this. I'm, and this is just pretending this is a bracelet, right? Cause obviously it's way too short, but I'm gonna take all my ends again, same thing, tie them all, whoops, tie them all together in a bundle so that I'm kind of just working with one group of thread instead of three. Still making a mess out of this. Okay, pull that down. Okay, so now, and obviously your knots are gonna be a little bit cleaner than mine, but you can take a shank style button. That's the one with the loop on the back. And you can thread this onto one or two of your pieces of thread, however many you can fit through there, right? slide that down and then tie another knot with all of your ends. This just gives it a little bit more clean look and gives you the opportunity, of course, to add a pretty button if you've got one, trim all that off, right? So your button is secure, right? And that's gonna be your clasp. So what you would do is when you put your bracelet on, you're gonna take your cords here or your threads and open up and just slip those around your button. And that makes a really pretty closure as well. <laughs> it's like a baby size bracelet, but um, you get the idea, right? On a full size bracelet, that looks really, really pretty. Um, that's a great way to finish it off. So you've got options. Um, don't don't get discouraged when you get to the ends not really knowing what to do you can braid the ends tie them together you can leave the ends long tie them together you can put beads on them you can um you can do you know a macrame over the top of them to make it adjustable you've got tons of options but i do love a button so i wanted to make sure that i showed you guys that as an option as well right all right, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed. I'm going to turn you around and we will say our goodbyes for the day. I appreciate you joining me for this class today. I hope that I have uh, sparked your creativity and, and given you a, um, a new way to look at your loom because you really can achieve so many different things, right, with fabric. Fiber jewelry is really, really cool. It's lightweight. It's not heavy. It's not bulky. You can add beautiful buttons to it if you want to. You can do braids. You can do a whole variety of things. And of course, if you're 
making for somebody who's maybe not a jewelry wearer, or if you're not a jewelry wearer, you can always use it because it's nice and flat as just a really beautiful personalized um, bookmark, which I think people still read actual books and not just, you know, there are books on their, on their iPads and things. I like a good book in my hand. So I still use bookmarks, you guys. <laughs> All right, I have appreciated it. I still appreciate it. I appreciate you all very, very much. Thank you so much for joining me and uh, come back soon because I've got another fun class with you guys. I'm gonna be teaching another fun project. We're doing a necklace and earring set coming up here in a few days. Also be sure to check out all of the other fun classes that are here at Michael's. Um, and that's it. Have a wonderful afternoon, you guys. Bye.